welcome everybody in such huge numbers. Thank you for coming out and braving the incredibly icy weather outside. And um, thank you to Kate and Missy, who have just flown in from Melbourne and who will return there in about an hour and a half, I think, because such is their commitment to this exhibition <laughs> that they will make flying visits. Missy, who's been all day in, uh, in the uh, throes of completing a music video, as I understand. <laughs> Yes, it's been a little bit of a stressful day trying to get my um, first video clip up and running, which actually incidentally is kind of inspired by your painting of my album cover. It's all kind of tied in together actually, which is quite interesting. Well, that's a bit of a hall of mirrors thing, isn't it? Where if you then make a video based on Kate's painting, paint, Kate's painting of you or Kate's painting for the album cover? Because... Well, everything that's painted in your life is pretty much by this woman, as I understand <laughs> it, right? It has been kind of one of those relationships. I, I met Kate when um, my housemate uh, is a good friend of Kate's, an old school friend, and um, she was having her 30th birthday at, at our house, and I just had a new back fence put in because the old one was, had rotted away and was kind of collapsing onto my house. So um, we got it replaced, and, and Kate came over and she said to Breeze, my friend, oh, I'd, I kind of love the experience of painting something so big if you want me to paint it. Was that it? You had to yeah. paint a, a big wall for a hotel or something? And yeah, I was, I was kind of, I'd only ever really worked small and I felt like it was time I needed to battle some, you know, bigger spaces. And I kind of was like, well, this is a really ugly pine fence, so nothing <laughs> I can do can make it work. Yeah, and I just... <laughs> It's true. And I was just like, seriously, you've got free reign. Like, if you want to paint my back fence, it'd be amazing. So how does that work? You just turn up with eight, eight, 18 buckets of paint and um, everybody ignores you as you just go beautifying well, the back fence? I turned up with nothing except my toddler. And then That's always a great start for a big project, isn't <laughs> and it? Then Here's we... me and my <laughs> tiny child. And then we went to the nearest... We, Google mapped and went, found the nearest paint shop, um, house paint shop, and went in there and the guy was lovely and actually ended up kind of selling me all these pure tints so I could mix my own colours and it was just lovely and I was like, okay, well, now it's going to have to be good because I haven't got, you know, bad paints or anything, so <laughs> whoops. And then um, I had limited time because, you know, my son was running around and I had, it was looking like it was going to rain as well. So I just kind you of only really started with like four primary colours or something. Yeah, didn't but you? then I kind of mixed them all up in yeah. ice cream containers, and that was quite incredible because the fence is just this incredible like mural of different things going on, and it was a <laughs> Mexican themed party that she was painting it for. So right. it's just and it's so many different colours going on. It's hard to believe that she started. So is there with a, a sort of colours. a Day of the Dead feel about the whole thing? Yeah, a little yeah, bit. There's a, a few skulls bit. in there, and there's a llama. And, um, <laughs> and some falling Mexicans. Yeah, some people oh, falling, falling around. The sky. <laughs> and a chicken. A chicken, yeah. Obviously Cactus. there'd be a chicken. Yeah. Um, <laughs> this is a pretty high-risk operation, though, isn't it? I mean, someone comes and paints your entire back fence, mm. which is, I'm assuming, yeah. a fair old expanse. What happens if you don't like the painting? See, I was thinking about that. I don't think that crossed your mind. <laughs> <laughs> well, it's... it's I mean, I don't have a very big backyard. It's a little, it's a courtyard of like a kind of semi-detached terrace. So it's not like ginormous, but it is a fair expanse, I guess, for a painting. But I, I was a fan of Kate's work before kind of having met her. And, and, and like, I, I think um, I may have checked out your, your work in the design files because um, she had some of her paintings in the design files house and also online and... And, and just the, the opportunity to have her paint my back fence was something yeah, that I completely exciting. jumped at. I was like, are you serious? You're doing this for free? That's amazing. <laughs> <laughs> and you want to do it? Yeah, sure. So you drove her to Bunnings, basically. <laughs> yeah. She looked if after would, Jasper, actually, yeah. is what she did. Yeah, yeah, she yeah, made him toasted her. sandwiches. <laughs> so I guess painting a, a large fence, Kate, would have prepared you for the Archibalds, given that you're not really allowed to enter anything that's you know smaller than ginormous anyway. When did that happen? When when did the Archibalds get so large? And did you feel kind of that size was important in approaching this project? Um, yeah, I felt a little bit conscious of needing to be noticed, but I also didn't want to do anything that didn't feel right for what I was trying to paint. So I guess it all happened at the right time. I was at this point where I really wanted to do a big painting and I actually already had the canvases. That's right, I had the canvases even before I met you, I think. I got these really, oh, really, really big ones. Yeah, I've mm. got one left. And I, um, 
And I thought, ah, oh, there you go, this is perfect. That's my opportunity to paint big, which I wanted to do anyway. And it means I can do the painting I want to do with Vissi and get a whole body in and get the scale the way I want it to be. And yeah, so it just kind of happened. So, so how did the idea, I mean, how do you ask someone if, you, if they're OK with the idea of you well, painting them? I mean, it's quite an intimate discussion, isn't it? it. <laughs> well, oh, come it's, on. <laughs> it's funny because I, well, you tell a story. Oh, well, um, I think she'd just finished painting the back fence in mm. two days and it, and it was this incredible work of art and I was just looking at it going, I can't believe I'm so lucky to have this in my backyard forever now. And um, I took a photo of it and I sent it to my manager and I said, I kind of want my album to look like this. <laughs> and, um, and she called me straight away and she said, well, if you do, like, uh, ask Kate if she wants to paint your album cover. And... And that's when the, the thought occurred to me that it could actually be possible it, that she might want to paint my album cover. So I asked her if she wanted to have a go at painting the album cover and um, she was really excited about the idea and then it kind of all came out in the conversation that she'd actually wanted to paint me for the Archibald a couple of years ago yeah, before we ago. even met. I had a little fantasy before I was a proper artist of like one day when I'm in the Archibald, you know, who am I going to paint? And I was kind of like, who am I going to paint? Oh, Missy Higgins. And I think it was actually probably quite a long time ago, like maybe four or five years ago. Yeah, and, um, and then I forgot all about it. But I remembered when I was painting her fence. And I thought, <laughs> oh, how funny. And then I kind of like said it as a joke as well. And, um, and someone overheard. And that's sort of how it happened. So <laughs> I didn't actually go, um, can I paint you for the archboard? <laughs> it's, a bit, it's a bit like asking someone on a date, isn't it? Yeah, I suppose. It is a bit, yeah. Because... You've got to back if yourself. If they say, no, it will be awkward. I mean, <laughs> yeah. it just will be, even if you pretend it won't be. Yeah. It will be awkward. And there are massive opportunities for awkwardness throughout the process as well. I mean, it's a very... Um, I mean, what are the rules of the arch board? You know, you actually have to... The sitter has to sit for the artist, right? Mm. So what are the rules and how do you prove that you've made out those conditions and you haven't just, you know... I took lots of photos a magazine on my <laughs> <laughs> I've got so many photos of the painting in process and... And the thing was, it was funny because we, you know, we're working on the album and I was painting Missy for the cover and I did two portraits of her before the one that we've used um, and I felt like I was just spending so much time looking at her face and we're spending so much time together so I was also really getting to know her and getting these insights into um, her expressions and, you know, just who she is. And... As a result, I kind of finished the cover painting and felt quite sad that I'd finished. And, you know, mm. I wasn't done with her face and her. Um, <laughs> because I don't think like I've ever had anyone say that to me. <laughs> <laughs> Not done with your face. It's, it's complimentary <laughs> in a slightly brutal way, isn't it? <laughs> but, you know, I sort of... I got to know her face. I really did. And I've never really painted portraits before. So it was like doing mm -hmm. something for the first time and doing it in a really kind of raw way where... I approached her as, um, I guess there was the side of her that was the visual element that I was sort of representing and then there was Missy, the person who I got to know so closely. And that was a really exciting thing to kind of mix, especially because I was fascinated by kind of going into that territory of, of doing a painting that was both figurative and, and also totally abstract and, and um, feeding into that sort of rhythmic kind of fluid stuff that I have been doing. So tell me about your decision, um, because you were quite definite, weren't you, that you wanted this to be a full body portrait? Yeah, I think Why? it's I think it's because the cover isn't. So I kind of felt like I'd done the, the face and now I wanted to do um, I wanted to situate her in more of a context. And so it wasn't it wasn't that you were looking in and you were seeing what was coming out of Missy. It was also Missy in a situation and her interacting with that situation and doing full body made that easier for me to sort of express, I guess. And you made the decision to depict her um, looking away from the observer and it's a, it's a very reflective stance and um, it's a, a kind of a, a curled up stance but quite a strong one. What yeah. is it you saw in that? I think that's exactly why I felt like that was the pose that I wanted to paint because it's both strong and it's kind of and it is reflective and, you know, I think um, if people sort of have seen images of Missy from all of the work that she's done in the media and whatever, it's, 
um, I think you'll often see her face front on and you'll often see her singing and performing. And, and I wanted to kind of show a side of her that I saw a lot of, which was her thinking deeply about things, um, sort of, yeah, just thinking and reflecting and being sort of in a quiet place because, you know, she doesn't just perform, she also does a lot of quiet, creative stuff in between. Um, and that sort of looks different, you know? It's a different looking thing. And I wanted her to look away because I wanted to get that feeling that, um, I suppose I wanted to feel like we were, the viewer could, could gain a sort of insight that wasn't just what she portrayed in her face. It was, it was the whole picture. Mm. Missy, I guess part of the experience of being um, famous is that you're viewed a lot, a lot more than normal people. Does being painted, um, sitting for a portrait, involve a different sort of examination? Did it feel different? Um, yeah, I think because this wasn't being used to sell <clears throat> a product. Like it wasn't, you know, it didn't have anything to do with my music or to do with marketing myself. It was actually a portrait of um, who Kate had got to know, which I guess is the real me and not the performer side of me. So um, it, was, it was really interesting because I, I guess a lot of these portraits happen um, to, to people who don't really know each other and just have maybe one sitting or a couple of sittings and, um, and that's it. But Kate and I at, at that point had become really good friends and um, we, like a, a group of friends uh, and us had kind of gone away to the hills for a weekend when she took the photo that ended up as the painting. So um, it, I was in a really relaxed place and, and yeah, I guess I'm naturally contemplative. So, um, it, you know, she could naturally capture me in that space without me having to fake it. And um, that was definitely what set this apart from any other sitting or photo mm. shoot that I've ever done. Do you get uncomfortable about the other kind of posing which is for um, images that, that are more commercial? I mean, is there something awkward in that? Or um, I don't know. They, not really. I, I guess I've done it so much now. Given that, that you've just spent two days making a film clip, I guess that you're a <laughs> grizzled veteran of this exact experience right now. <laughs> it seems like a good moment to ask you. Yeah. <laughs> I guess it's... Um, it's interesting because there is that kind of fine line between you, the performer, and you, the, the person. Um, and I've always been the kind of uh, artist who um, works best when being genuine. Mm -hmm. So it's not like I have a, a separate identity or a persona that I, that I put on on stage and photograph. So, but there, but there, you do have to... Um, draw the line between you and that other person otherwise it can get a little bit muddy and you can lose your mind a little bit sometimes and 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 there needs to be something still sacred for you mm -hmm. so um, yeah I it's it's interesting it I, I've be definitely become desensitized to it a little bit it now. must be quite an emotionally administrative task to control and moderate those intrusions, I suppose, and to moderate the amount of um, your person that you um, uh, divulge or, or give away with, with each round of interviews or, um, or images. Yeah, I, I guess so. I think as I've um, gotten older, I've come to realise that it's actually... Um, much easier to not try to <laughs> be anyone else because it takes much less um, of, a, uh, of a conscious kind of effort while you're doing it. So um, it's become, I've become more comfortable with it because I've had the practice and also because I've become more comfortable with just, yeah, just being me and, and, um, and, and not feeling as though I did have to put on a certain persona or, or pretend that I was flawless or anyone that I'm, I'm not, um, yeah. So during the process, while the painting is being painted, do you go and have a bit of a peep or do you sort of turn up and, you know, invite yeah, yourself in for a cup of tea? She couldn't miss it. <laughs> <laughs> it was, because what we did originally, because I created this situation at, when we were in the hills, because I really wanted to get, I really wanted it to be in this kind of natural situation. And, and so we sort of 
created this pose and I got a photo which sort of formed the background around Missy and then I had to, then it was about getting her to get back into that pose in my studio where I was painting, which was like, you know, there's her on the floor right next to the massive painting. So there was no point <laughs> With Jasper at which, crawling around yeah, there. Yeah, yeah, <laughs> jumping on it. So there was no point at which, um, yeah, the painting was kind of hidden from so her. So there wasn't a ta-da moment. But, but, um, but the first really. time that I saw yeah. it, it was pretty much yeah, done. Once it was I'd kind done of the, yeah, once I'd done the original sketch and stuff, I kind of got her to go away for quite a while. And because there's yeah. such a big parting part of the painting is what's around it. And then so I kind of did, I didn't want Missy watching me doing that bit because it was like me trying to... Why not? Because you didn't want... Um, I think it was because... To get the wrong idea about where you were going no, or... I was never worried about what Missy would think, but I just felt like I really wanted to give way to that process of expressing in a sort of fluid way there's sort of more kind of intangible elements that I was trying to get around her. And so that was, to me, felt quite separate to the part where I actually had her next to it trying to get her ear right and, you know, like that to me is a really different kind of painting to sort of, um, yeah, it's like there are sort of two sides to it, I guess. The congratulations on the ear though, it's lovely. Oh, well, oh, yeah, thanks. <laughs> Still not my favourite bit, but yeah. <laughs> on the what? The ear? On the ear. Yeah. <laughs> It's hard. <laughs> One of the best years of the exhibition, I think, very strongly. Is it ever is. <laughs> so tell me, Kate, about um, your feeling about the art of all. You know, you're not a, a figurative painter generally, are you? What no. is the magic of this particular exhibition? Um, I think the magic of it was just the magic of the whole process with Missy and the fact that I could enter it. And so I, and I obviously at some point I always thought I would, but. So you'll um, be entering another painting of Missy next year. <laughs> and every year after that. <laughs> My until other she kicks ear. me out. <laughs> yeah. Face the other way. Um, yeah, I don't know. I mean, I think it's a, it's a great exhibition because so many people see it and I always think it's fascinating and it's really interesting to have this kind of concept that is about the sitter and the person. It's about two people. And, um, mm. and yeah, I am really new to it and I'm definitely going to do, keep doing it. But I suppose this process to me felt quite different to um, perhaps a lot of people's experience of painting a portrait in that I had, we had such a personal relationship going on and I had so many opportunities to kind of look at her and just <laughs> check something out. and. She was always looking at me really weirdly. <laughs> Every time we hung out, I'd catch her just kind of looking at the side <laughs> of my face or something. Um, but, you know, the thing is, uh, you know, she's my friend, so I really felt like there was all this information I had to get onto the canvas. And I think if I... don't know, if, if I didn't have that, maybe it wouldn't be so fun. It, it really... Um, it felt like an expression of, of our friendship in a way. Hmm. Now I'm going to um, I'm going to in a couple of minutes ask for any questions from the audience just in case anybody has a, a, a burning inquiry. I'm going to let you arrange yourselves for a couple of minutes um, while I ask this next question but just keep that in mind. We can probably um, rush a microphone to you when the moment comes. Um, when you said that there was information that you wanted to convey, what, what, what was the what was the strongest piece of information? I mean Okay. Tell us about what you called the piece and why. Okay, well, um, it's called Melody, You're the Only One Who Saves Me. Um, and that's actually a lyric from one of Missy's songs, which hasn't come out yet. And, um, <laughs> nice <laughs> spoiler, Kate. Okay. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> Whoops. <laughs> Consider that tweeted. <laughs> <laughs> um, and I just thought it was such a beautiful line. I mean, I love the song, um, as I'm sure you all will when it comes out. Um, <laughs> But Keep plugging it. <laughs> <laughs> I just thought it was a beautiful line because Missy has, you know, like she's had a, a sort of turbulent period over the last few years of, um, yeah, it's just been a bit up and down of kind of having to re-find her love of music and, and going through a dark phase and then just absolutely finding that love. And um, I guess that was, a, there was something really inspiring about that that really made me want to paint, um, you know, that... that idea of that process, I guess, that she's been through of, of um, sort of losing where she is and then refinding it. And now, um, you know, with this album and this point in time where I've met Missy, she's just so um, invested for all the right reasons and so kind of authentic and present and kind of loving it, you know. And 
I wanted to capture the dark and, and the fact that there are these downtimes and there are these questioning times and then also the sort of exuberant performance aspect and um, I guess, you know, Missy's such a deep thinking, complex person, but she's also so, um, such an amazing performer and so fun and, and she just was crying out to be painted, you know, to have those aspects pulled out and, and painted. I guess that's what I felt. And Missy, how was that experience for you? I mean, um, did it feel risky or um, agreeing to, to be painted, um, did it feel um, like an undertaking? Uh, I'd already been painting you for a while. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, it kind of just felt like an extension of what we'd already been doing with the album cover mm. um, because that was a similar kind of process where Kate really wanted to go deep inside of me and um, and and paint the, the the you know the darks and the and also the colours of of uh, the songwriting process and the 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 performing process and because the Does it feel as an image that it matches the album? Uh, which, the cover or the actual painting? Either, or both. Uh, yeah, both do actually, <laughs> definitely. I think because they probably come from similar places maybe. Um, mm. The the album cover, you know, uh, the, the album definitely touches on a lot of the, the dark periods that Kate was talking about. Um, feeling kind of creatively blocked and and also the liberation at the at the end when you kind of rediscover your um your passion for something and just i guess the 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 different shades of 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 me i don't know <laughs> and and then the the archival painting i think it's probably maybe coming from a similar place and that it's definitely a, um about the yeah, the pro the process behind behind the scenes of all the kind of mental um, roller coaster rides that that you go on, and um, yeah, I, it didn't it didn't really feel like a, a leap of sorts. I just I really trusted Kate, and I yeah. love her art, and I, I know, and she'd represented me so beautifully, kind of accurately for the album cover. I, I was really fascinated to see where she could go next. Is that roller coaster, and I know I've promised to take questions, I will in a second, is that roller coaster ride that you're talking about, is that about what other people think of you or about what you think of you? Or is it hard um, in your position to make a proper distinguishment between the two? Uh, it is sometimes a little bit hard. I, I try to... Um, I try to distinguish between the two, but sometimes it gets a bit blurred when, when you're hearing so many opinions so constantly and so loudly all around you. It's hard to decipher which of those you should trust or whether you should trust any of them or anything like that. So, yeah, it's, uh, it's all part of it. There, there's, there's several kind of things that contribute to the roller coaster. But, um, yeah, I think the, the colours that she... Like the kind of burst of inspiration, probably most accurately kind of describes where I ended up after the the dark times. Well, that's <laughs> which very is happy good. Day. Yeah, it's a happy ending. Do we have any questions in house? I'm looking for waving hands. If not, I'll just bomb along merrily, unassisted. Feel free to jump up and down and make noises if um, I've missed you. Um, so. Back to the Archibalds in general, it's kind of unusual, isn't it, that out of, um, I think, all of the works that were hung this year, uh, I think you two are one of the only two um, all-female um, uh, pairings. Um, it's always been a pretty male-dominated um, field, the Archibalds, and Nora Heisen, who was the first woman to win it, got into spectacular difficulties when she won it because I think it was possibly a legal challenge. Um, what do you th have you got any theories as to why that is, Kate? Um, no, I don't. Uh, it's, um, yeah, I don't know. I mean, um, I guess it's time more girls just entered paintings. <laughs> Maybe they already are, I don't know. I really don't know. I suppose when it was established and it was about 
um, paintings of people of influence. I guess most of the artists were blokes and so were most of the people of influence. Mm. I mean, as an artist, do you think about it as a, as a, a bit of a blokey field or that didn't really enter into your, yeah, your thinking? I, I, I mean, think we know that you chose to paint um, Missy because she was the only person you could think of that <laughs> yeah. you could paint and you didn't want to paint anyone else anyway, so that's yeah. very convenient. But at the same time, I mean, yeah, I did. I just wanted to paint Missy, but um, at the same time, I do want to paint other people as well. But I think part of really wanting to paint her when I thought, when I had that initial thought of what, what, who do I want to paint for the art world, part of it is because I, I think I did want to paint a really, f a fairly sort of feminine painting, I guess, mm. and I wanted to go really go there and really um, do a painting that I wanted to do that was not in any way. Um, trying not to be girly <laughs> um, and you know I don't always necessarily paint like that but I, I felt like I wanted to do a portrait that um, had lots of pink in it. <laughs> lots of pink in it. <laughs> yeah I love pink. Um, <laughs> um, yeah I, I guess when you see a lot of paintings by men of men you want to be a woman painting a woman. You want to use some pink. <laughs> well that is a very uplifting note on which to conclude this interaction. <laughs> Lady just wanted to paint in pink. Okay, fair <laughs> enough. Um, look, I know that we need to finish up because there's a film that people need to get to. Thank you so much, everybody, for uh, turning up in such great, generous numbers this evening. And thank you to Kate and to Missy for giving your time tonight. It's been great thank to hear you. from you. Thank you. Thank you.